Hi, I'm Ray G4NSJ. WISPR, W-S-P-R. It stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. And it's fascinating. I recently, well not even a week ago, about five days ago, I bought this little transmitter. Look, there we are from Zach Tech. It's a 200 milliwatt transmitter. There are three models, I believe. Mine covers, uh, what is it, 40 meters through to six meters. That's right. What it does, 200 milliwatts on each band. You can do band hopping and all that stuff where it goes from band to band, but um, I haven't tried that yet. What I did was I tried it on 10 meters. Okay, just left it on. I've got a 5 8 vertical aerial down the guard. It's actually a CB aerial. Is it a Sigma, whatever it is? Uh, obviously tuned up for the 10 meter amateur band. And I put the aerial into the little transmitter and left it on. It was on, what, three, four days, a solid four days. I thought I'd see what the propagation did, and it was interesting. At night, of course, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. The higher frequency bands are good in the day, the lower frequency bands are good at night, but it's interesting to see, actually, on the map. Uh, if you look at my website, uh, g4nsj.co.uk, go to the main menu and down to the whisper uh, pages there's all the, the maps on there the information everything what you can do is you look on the map and you can see where you've been heard so I've got where I am in my QTH G4 and SJ then there's there we are you can have a look at the map there see there's the lines out to see where I've been heard so at night there's nothing as there might be one or two locals chatting just sort of a local ground wave but there's nothing sky wave, there's no skip, there's no ionosphere, nothing like that affecting it. So basically the map is just nothing at night. Bear in mind propagation changes from hour to hour, day to day, time of year and everything. But uh, I just checked every day to see what was happening. Here's a map, look at this one. This was 9.30 in the morning on the 14th of December 24. I'm getting down to I don't know how you pronounce it, Nyamea, Numea, Station 3, Antarctica. That was quite uh, surprising on 200 milliwatts. You see on the map down there, right down past South Africa, in the snow and ice. There we are. <laughs> That's quite amazing. Their call sign, by the way, is Delta Papa Zero, Golf of Victor November, Oblique 1. They're on QRZ if you want to look that up. And also on my website, I've put a link to their website. So that was at 9.30 in the morning. That was the only contact. That was the only station receiving me on 10 metres. As I said, 10 metres at night, nothing. Then it starts waking up. You know, as daylight comes, things starts happening, activity begins. Now this map here, this is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, at uh, on 10 metres, of course. And you can see going over to... America, down to the Canary Islands, Iceland, up the top there. This is, uh, things are beginning to happen. I've been trying to watch the map every hour or so just to see what's happening. Obviously, I don't take a, a screenshot of it every hour because there'd be too many maps. There'd be hundreds of them to put on over all the days. But uh, that's it at two o'clock. Moving on to 15.30, 3.30 in the afternoon. South America, there you go, down to Brazil, you see on that map? That was good. The band does really open up during mid-afternoon, I found. And then at 1700 hours, there's another screenshot, North Carolina and the Canary Islands. It's beginning to, you know, five o'clock, it's beginning to disappear. And I think that was the last I had, yes, yeah, 1700 hours. That was the last that I had on that particular day. So that's a 10 meter amateur band over a kind of, well, 24 hour period, if you include the night. You don't have to be a licensed radio amateur to use the map. Go on uh, Google or wherever, look up WSPR net and you'll find the map. And you can see in there who's doing what. If, for example, if you type in my call sign, type in 10 meters up the top, you choose the band. You can put a call sign in to, to search or whatever and you can see what's going on so you don't have to be you don't have to have a transmitter all you need is a computer to look at the map uh, i i look at it on the ipad check the map on here 
Uh, even you know, when I'm in bed, I wake up in the night, I have a look on the map to see how I'm doing. And of course, on 10 metres at night, I'm not doing anything at all. So yeah, just get the map up on your computer and have a look. You can log in if you want to as a shortwave listener. I've noticed on there you've got things like SWL34. Uh, people have just put in something like that to identify themselves. So it is useful, even if you're only listening. You can see what's going on. I find the whole thing fascinating. I'm now on 17 metres, the little transmitters over there. I'm on 17 metres. The aerial for that band is 100 foot end fed of wire, only 15 feet above, what is that, 5 metres, is it, above the ground? And uh, that's been on now for 24 hours, so I've only got a couple of maps for that. Most of that was last night, so not much happens. It's interesting, <clears throat> 17 metres, 18 megs, very similar to 10 metres. You know, I've got America, I've got Iceland, I've got Canary Islands. I've compared the, the couple of maps and they're very similar. I've not done 21 megs yet, uh, 15 metres or 12 metres because they're all going to be much and much the same. The thing, the difference between 10 metres and 17 metres is 17 opens earlier in the morning and closes later in the evening, as you would expect. The next one I'm doing after 17 metres will be 30 metres, 10 megs. That will be a, a real difference from you know, 10 to 28 megs. That band, 30 metres to 10 metres, that will be different. Be interesting to see what happens at night on 10 megs, to see what's going on there. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that. The thing I've noticed is when I look on the map, you can look up people's call signs and their details. Everyone's using a different aerial, obviously. You know, we don't all have identical aerials, which is a shame. It's a shame there's not a, a standard aerial, I don't know, like a whip, a certain length whip that you use on 10 metres, a, a certain height above the ground, and we're all the same. But there we are, that could never be, obviously. It's not practical, is it? But of course, some people I've looked on there and I thought, hang on a minute, how come he's getting right down to Australia and I'm not? Well, I've got 200 milliwatts. He is on a, a transceiver with five watts. That's how. Or his aerial is better than mine, you know? So you've got propagation comes into it, your transmitter power, your aerial, so much comes into it. But if you are what I'm trying to do, if you are steady on, say, 10 metres, I was on there four days solid, right? That gives people a chance to see where I am. They can hear me or not. You've got to be consistent. So I'm now on 17 metres for four days. Here are a couple more maps. On the 13th of December at 13.45 hours, Reunion Island. See it down there on the map? Just east of uh, Africa and Madagascar and that Reunion Island. So that was quite a nice one. And on the 14th at 1300 hours, up right up north, not far from the Arctic, uh, how do I pronounce it? Svalbard. S-V-A-L-B-A-R-D, Valbard, Svalbard, right up there. That was the 14th, uh, 1300 hours. I haven't, as yet, with the whisper transmitter, with the 200 milliwatts, I haven't got to Australia. When I was using the IC7300, which the minimum power on that is about 1.6 watts, according to a friend of mine who measured it, when you're on 0% transmit power, about 1.6 watts. I did Tasmania and Australia, you know, that, that was easy. But of course, for 200 milliwatts, that's not quite so easy. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Tasmania, Australia, and all down that area uh, with 200 milliwatts. And of course, the west coast of America, that was easy with 1.6 watts. 200 milliwatts is a lot less. I'm just having a look now on the map at uh, 17 metres. Where am I getting to? Finland, Sweden, Canary Islands. That chap's always there, the Canary Islands. The chap up in Iceland's hearing me. He's always there. But nothing outside sort of Europe there. Poland, Italy, Austria, all around that area. I've noticed that I haven't had a great deal into Russia since I've started. Uh, four, what was it, four days ago on 10 metres. Nothing into Russia. So that's something else I'm waiting for. 
and also as I say on the 200 milliwatts I want to get to the west coast of America but we shall see it's early days I shall leave it here because I don't want to bore you too much uh, what else is there to say the 100 foot end fed that I'm using now on 17 meters I've got an aerial tuning unit with it because uh, although the little transmitter the whisper transmitter they do reckon that you can short it or have it open circuit the aerial socket and it won't damage it but I don't want high SWR you know I don't a lot of reflected power going back into it I don't think it will damage the transmitter from what I've read but of course what it will do it cuts down the amount of power you're putting out because as it is my 10 meter aerials down the garden I've got uh, 80 feet of 213 coax so there's got to be some loss there isn't there uh, anyway, this is the first video. I've no doubt you know me if you have been watching in the past. You know me of old. There'll probably be like half, half a million videos or something. So this is the first one, just to introduce you to the, well, to the whole concept of the weak signal propagation reporter, which is all great fun. And uh, I will be covering other bands at some stage, but I want to, as I say, I want to spend a few days on 10, a few days on 17, then a few days on uh, 30 metres and we'll see what happens. Right, thanks for watching as always. I shall see you next time. Bye bye for now.